Hello and welcome to this Qigong session. My morning classes here in the UK run from Monday to Wednesday at 9.30 UK time and often we isolate some of the moves of Qigong in order to give ourselves a prescription for particular um, phenomenon or symptoms. And so the question of anxiety has come up and whether there is a good Qigong form especially for anxiety. And the truth is that all Qigong should be aiming at relaxation and calm, particularly of the vagus nerve. But we can accentuate that in many ways and I'm sure there are many different ways of promoting relaxation in times of anxiety. And just to say a word about the condition anxiety. Qigong is helpful, but if there is chronic anxiety and extreme anxiety, then it, it shouldn't be a substitute for professional intervention. And also, if you are an anxious per person and you do this form and you find yourself more anxious, then please don't do it. Okay, so, the breathing of Qigong already promotes calm and what we do in the classes is we add an extra out breath, we add an extra length to the out breath. And the reason for doing that is twofold. So the first is that when you breathe out fully, the mind and body perceives that you're, you're almost sighing like, ha. Ah. So there's a, a sensation of relief or I can let go now. And also if we were in a state of threat, if something was threatening us, we wouldn't breathe out fully. We would actually breathe very shallowly and fast so that we could get oxygen quickly to our muscles in order to fight or run away. And so a deep, long out breath right the way through to empty of air will signal to the body and mind already that our environment is safe. So let's just do a couple of really long out breaths and experience how that is. And the in breath you can just let go and the in breath will come in by itself. And when you've watched this video, and it is a training or coaching video, so once you've learned the techniques, you would spend longer perhaps doing that. And then another way to promote calm or to lessen anxiety is to feel grateful. So the, once again, the attitude or emotion of gratitude is unlikely to arise in a threatening situation. And so going back to our primal roots, if we were being attacked by a wild animal, we'd be very unlikely to feel content or grateful. And the emotions of contentment and gratitude are very similar. They create a very similar reaction in the body. And so often it's easier to feel grateful for an inanimate object because if we start feeling gratitude for friends, family, animals, um, even our garden, then thoughts can arise. Uh, it's, it's less simple. Um, there's a, ju a value judgment, isn't it beautiful? Or even, oh that needs doing, or yes I'm grateful but. <laughs> so there's a complexity to those, but whereas if we feel grateful for an inanimate object, something really neutral, then that's often easier. And that's all we want is the attitude of gratitude. And so I'm just going to spend a few moments feeling grateful for, hmm, feeling grateful for this shoe here, this pair of shoes. I'm going to feel grateful for this pair of shoes. <clears throat> I 
And perhaps you can start to feel that, how if we uh, tweak our emotions slightly just by focusing on something and feeling a certain thing, we quell any anxiety that's going on. We can't do the two things at once, be anxious and grateful. Okay, so in addition to these, there are many, many acupuncture points throughout the body that would make us calmer if needled or stimulated or pressed. But I'm just going to use two because they're common to all Qigong forms. So the first is in the center of the palm. It doesn't matter where in the center of the palm for our purposes. And you can just hold that for a minute with the thumb, like so, and gently hold it. No extreme pressure, just feel that the thumb is there in the center of the palm. You might feel the shoulder descend a little bit. If you look at my shoulders, then the hand that is being pressed by the palm, the shoulder is slightly lower. I think. Yes. And the palms of the hands in Qigong are very important to measure the amount of qi or bioelectricity that's being emitted and being collected by the body. So in this particular Qigong movement that I'm going to show you, we use the palms of the hands the center point and we bring them together to do that so often that's a religious signal that in Qigong this is not it's just a it creates a circuit that calms the heart and there's one other little nuance which is that in this in my teachings I often extend the thumb because the chi is forming a circuit and then we can send the chi through the thumbs as if they're little acupuncture movements so you see in the form we track the hands down the front of the body and you won't be able to see but my thumb's slightly extended so it's a little nuance and the other point that i'd like to illustrate is on the sole of your foot and if Again, I'm going to use the shoe. So if this was the sole of my foot, if we divide it into three like that, then it's here. Okay, so here's the ball of the foot and it's there. And it's called bubbling spring. It's the start of the kidney channel in the body. And we're already stimulating it by doing Qigong. But if we're conscious of it in this particular movement, then it's doubly powerful. So bringing intention and attention to places, it's doubly powerful. So this particular movement is from the Shibashi 2 form, and there's a video on my YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole form. We'll start off with just a gentle opening movement, and then we'll do white crane salutes, as it's known, and we'll add some gratitude. <clears throat> Let the feet be around shoulder width apart and parallel. The tailbone is tucked down and under, so as if it's connected to the earth. The spine is elongating upwards, led by the top of the head. <clears throat> slightly tuck the chin in and the space between the inside of the arms and the sides of the body. And then just a starting movement, so let the hands come the lower belly so they're just facing the lower belly they're soft and slightly cupped and then let them come up the body keep the shoulders down turn them and then as if pushing away clouds separating the clouds this is called and then back to the lower belly we'll do that three times 
And you could follow a gentle in breath here. And then a very long out breath as mentioned. So down through the tailbone, down through the feet, the breath goes. Stay breathing through the nose throughout if it's comfortable for you. Pushing away the clouds. Clear space for practice. And then just let your body shake. Just relax it, loosen it, and let your body shake. And this is a warm-up that's particularly good if you're in an anxious state because it, stim it simulates trembling, but in a controlled way. So the body feels like it's expressing or letting go of the anxiety. Not in fact, expressing it is more important. So shake the hands, shake the elbows, the shoulders, Stop and shake the feet out each, each way. And you can spend some time doing this, again, because this is a coaching video. Once you've got the essence of it, then spend a little bit more time, perhaps, shaking, vibrating the body. Standing again. And then we'd like to warm the knees up because the movement we're going to do can be a bit tough on the knees. So just softening, holding the knees and then rotating them one way and then the other way. And coming back into the starting position. Here we go with white crane salutes. So I'll show you the upper body movement first. And what we can do actually as well, just another nuance, is to just move the middle finger forward because that stimulates the palm point. So standing for a moment with the middle finger facing forward, stimulating the palm point and then following the in-breath Keep the shoulders down and the palms come together. Again, the thumb is extended and you are tracking down the midline of the front of the body, particular channel there until it's not comfortable and then we just go again. So that's the upper body movement. Here's your in breath and here is your out breath. Tracking down what we call the Wren channel conception vessel. And then let me show you, as you pull the hands down, shift the weight, take one hand, one foot behind, and it's as if you're curtsying, or just bend the knees. If that's not comfortable, or if that's too much, then simply just put the foot behind. But there's an attitude of humility and, yes, gratitude. If you wish to, you can really go down a fair amount. Try and stay low to the ground when you transfer from one side to the other. And then we'll just add gratitude. I should tell you the breathing actually is, so here's the breathing out, so full out breath, collecting the in breath on the way to the other side and full out breath here. As you put the foot behind you, just feel that sole of foot point, that point there that I pointed out earlier, that you're kind of massaging it, as it were. And then add some gratitude for whatever. It doesn't matter what you're feeling grateful for. So there's a hedge in front of me. 
I'm going to start feeling grateful for the hedge. Thank you for watching.